Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to get a perfect skim coat using my paint roller trick. I'll show you everything from all the tools and materials you're going to need, how to mix the joint compound, how to apply with the paint roller, and how to skim coat my demonstration wall. And be sure to stick around to the end of the video for some bonus skim coating tips. And if you're new to the channel, my name's Paul and I've been a drywall and painting contractor for over 20 years. If you're looking to step up your drywall, texturing and painting game, be sure to hit that subscribe button and also the bell notification to get alerted whenever I post a new video. Let's get into this video. All right, so here's the tools I'm gonna to be using to roll on the joint compound with. I'm using a USG all-purpose joint compound it smooths out easy and it's easy to sand. So that's why I use it. Here's the 20 volt DeWalt cordless drill that I'll be using and a paint mixer to thin down the joint compound. You want to thin it down to about a yogurt consistency. I'll also be using a 14 inch mud pan, a 12 inch drywall taping knife and a six inch drywall taping knife. This is the roller I'll be using. It's a three quarter inch lambskin roller cover and then a, a roller handle and a five gallon paint grid to roll off the excess joint compound so I can get a nice consistent coat on the wall. So stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to skim coat a wall using my paint roller trick. All right, so what I like to do is uh, right off the bat is separate the bucket of joint compound in half. What I'm going to do is mix it to about a yogurt consistency. I like this scooper because it fits the bucket nice. When you get down to the bottom, you can just scoop it right out. Just convenient. Easier than a drywall tape and knife. Got my paint mixer. I'm just gonna add a little water as I go. I don't wanna get it too soupy. I just put in probably a couple ounces. What you want to do is work it up from the bottom. That way the water gets saturated throughout. Let me know in the comments if you're a DIYer, a contractor, painter, handyman. Just kind of curious. need a little more water. A couple more ounces, little at a time, like baking a cake. Just a little more water. And then I'm gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes because it does tend to tighten back up. So let it sit for about 10 minutes and then get it to the consistency that you're looking for. An easy way to test it is just get some on your knife and watch it come off. A little thicker than yogurt. If you're going over a smooth wall, you can go ahead and thin it down even more. But if you're going over a texture, you want to kind of keep the consistency of the mud as much as possible. If you're rolling it on, to be able to do that, you have to have it just thin down a little bit more than you want. All right, so we'll add a little more water and then let it set, 10 minutes.
that looks good to cover this texture and roll it on. All right, we'll let that sit for 10 minutes. All right, it's been 10 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little more water because I know it's gonna need it. I've probably put in six to eight ounces of water. Pretty much go by feel and how it looks. Feel free to ask me any questions about how to mix up the joint compound if you didn't get it quite clear in the video. Also, the paint mixer that I'm using attached to my cordless drill, you can get at any of the big box stores like Lowe's or Home Depot in the paint section. If you did mix it too thin, you could go ahead and just add a little more joint compound and start the process over again. So here's the thing, even if you start rolling the mud on and it's too thick or too thin, you can make an adjustment as needed. So uh, that's my tips for mixing. All right, so uh, got the joint compound mixed up to a yogurt consistency. Gonna put my paint roller grid in my five gallon bucket, three quarter inch roller cover, roller handle, extension pole. All right, so uh, basically you just want to get the front compound up there and then you'll smooth it all out. You want to try and keep it consistent. So uh, just dip your whole roller in the bucket. That way you can sink it and get plenty of mud on there. If you're doing a big wall, you want to do it in sections. If you're doing a small wall like this, say a bathroom, you can just go ahead and roll out the whole wall. But we're going to get this up there and then roll it all out to where it's pretty consistent. It's going to take two coats. And maybe a touch up coat. No kidding. For a smooth finish. Or if you're going to retexture. Just kind of working it around. So everything's covered. You don't want, it's not like painting. You want to leave the material on there, but you want it consistent. So you get a nice consistent skim coat. That's the key. That's the good thing about this paint roller trick. You get a very consistent application of the joint compound. If you're inexperienced trying to do it by hand, you're going to get kind of a, a more wavy look if you're not careful. If you look at it, you can see where it needs more mud. I'm not going to go all the way down because when I skim this out, I'll be able to hit that. Top needs a little more mud. Now this is just a demonstration. Some people like that texture. That's a way to get a texture as well. I've matched this texture before in condominium lobbies, 
people's houses. I'll leave links to other skim coating videos down in the description below. I have all kinds of skim coating videos from skim coating over a popcorn ceiling, after wallpaper removal, how to seal the brown paper that gets torn from wallpaper removal. So be sure to check those videos out in the description. I'm, I'm putting most of the pressure. I'm not hardly putting any pressure, but it's just the weight of the, the roller. But it's over on this side, so it's not leaving a line on the left side. Otherwise, you'd see exactly where the roller's been and where it hasn't been by the lines. All right, there's the roller texture. I'm gonna move that out of the way. This is why you need the mud pan. I'm sure some of you are wondering, why do you need a mud pan if you're rolling it on? Well, you're gonna have excess mud. 12 inch knife, 14 inch drywall pan. Let's start at the bottom. So again, I'm applying light pressure when I'm doing the skim coat. I'm not pushing real hard. I wanna leave the material on the wall to cover the knockdown texture as much as possible. So basically I'm just going along the wall, putting pressure on the left, lifting on the right, so I'm not leaving any big lines in the skim coat. You see the little ridges? Don't worry about those. Those will get filled on the second coat. Just like the roller, I'm putting pressure on a certain side. Putting it on the left side, putting it on the left side, so I don't leave a line on the right side. If I, if I don't, it's gonna leave a line right there. But even if you do have a few lines, once it's dry, you can scrape them off with your six inch knife. Let's get the bottom. Pressure on the left side, lifting the right side just barely. See how there's no lines from the knife? These chatter marks are from the texture. Second coat will make all that go away. All right, so there is the first coat with my paint roller trick. We'll let that dry. It's pretty thin. It is on a painted surface, which slows down the drying time. Well, you can see the texture is pretty much gone. So I'm gonna let that dry, scrape any I see a little spot here. It's not worth going back. That's where a screw hole was. That'll come right off when I do any scraping of the lines and I'll scrape that. So stay tuned. Skim coat number two coming up. All right, so I wanted to give you a, a view in the drying process. I get a lot of questions on how do you know when it's dry? You know your skim coat is dry when it's turned white. If you look over to the right side, you can see it's a little darker and above's a little darker. It's dried right there because the fan was blowing there. You gotta move your fan around just a little bit. But you can see that it's, it's dry over here and still drying on the right side and above. It's been exactly one hour. Leave me a hashtag drywall tube down in the comments if you're enjoying these videos. Probably got another hour, it'll be completely dry. And if you want to step up your drywall, texturing, or painting game, be sure to hit that round icon in the middle of the screen now to keep up with all my latest videos. 
If you've got a friend that's a contractor or DIYer, be sure to share this video with them on Facebook or Twitter. Thanks so much for watching.